Hello everyone, welcome back towards match day number two of the ESL Pro League NA Division Season 6. And we are currently, well shortly, going to go on towards map number two between Optic and Rogue. If you just missed us, it was overpass. It was a demolition, Billy. It absolutely was. Optic had full control of that game. And apart from Vice getting a couple of key rounds, key little jabs in here, and Optic recovering fairly quickly, there wasn't much that they could do, was there? Yeah, I mean, Vice, do, like, Vice was in good form. Others, not so, but then again, they're using two fill-ins, and that's never a good position to be in. You're up against this hot lineup, you know, full of tier one people, and you're using two subs. Yeah. Never a fun position to be in. Just going over the score, CLG on the mainstream did take a 16-9 victory over Misfits on Cobblestone, so CLG continuing their good start to the season, whereas, as mentioned earlier, Optic, just too easy for them. Absolutely. I mean, uh, I'd say that would have been a, an interesting game between CLG and Misfits, um, hopefully. Um, maybe getting a couple of interesting rounds in there. Uh, IGL is making adjustments going back and forth. I'd say the OG road game a bit more of a, we're going to kill you and uh, Mixwell is going to run everywhere he wants and do anything he wants. So let's see if it's a bit of a different story here on Mirage. Maybe uh, Rogue can come in hot. I think they definitely need to get going early if they go down uh, eight zero nine zero. Uh, uh, you know, nine one early in the game. There isn't very much they'll be able to do. I don't think. Speaking of hot, if you do want to go in towards, I guess an ex a hot experience, you can always try ESCA. It's always a fun time there. Yeah, I would say things get a little heated. Yeah, definitely. But it is a better experience than matchmaking for certain. One hundred twenty eight tick servers, better hit reg, generally. Yep, and definitely, actually. I shouldn't say generally, definitely. The amount of times on matchmaking, all these shots are whiffs. You just kind of go, why? Why do I bother? So ESCA, yeah. go try it out now. I'm fairly sure that the ESL, uh, our ESL Twitter page most likely will post up some codes to try as well. So if you're looking just to trial it out, see if you can snag one of those codes. Otherwise, it's pretty cheap for a month subscription. Yeah, it's not too bad, and you get to forge lifelong bonds with your fellow comrades in the uh, online gaming community. Exactly. Back on towards the matchup. Mirage, very, very simplistic map in, in comparison towards Overpass, but it's going to be... Uh, okay, so I'm going to reset that. It's going to be Optic's map pick, mm. so most likely Rogue will be opting to start CT. Do you think this is actually a good decision for them to start CT, or probably a worse decision? Because that way Optic on the T side actually can dictate the tempo. I mean, it has to be a good decision. Uh, last time they started T, especially on a tactical map for Rogue, it did not go very well for them. Uh, I would say that, you know, Mirage might be feeling a little bit more comfortable for the boys on Rogue, although they did pick Overpass. I mean, we've all played Mirage 1,500 times. We've all played, you know, hundreds of Mirage pugs, at, at those guys especially at this point. So they understand Mirage. It's a bit more of a simplistic map. We take mid or you execute one of the bomb sites. Mid control is absolutely crucial for the T side. And on the CT, you know, um, you either go for that heavy mid control or you play towards the bomb sites. So, you know, Rogue should have a fairly good idea of how to play. They just need to sort of turn up individually and see what they can do. And Optic, you know, I would say for the kind of lineup that they have and them being fairly new towards um, you know, this uh, this lineup, this is a good map pick. Uh, you know, the kind of less tactical, more sort of we come and shoot you maps should be fairly good for them. Um, and they've already shown they do perfectly fine on a tactical map like Overpass as they come quickly at Connector. Whitmar boosted up onto Short. That was a nice little spot from him. And see if he can get us himself a second as Vice cleans up Naf. Magic trades out and Shinobi getting another one. Both of them just picking mid relentlessly. Four versus two here as Shinobi picks up another one and Magic stuck in, in Connector. Yeah, much better from Rogue. That CT pistol was a nice setup. It looks like they did potentially a little bit of homework, or they kind of guessed as well. They had that three initial towards B site. They heard the fast unders presence coming in from Optic, and as a result, put Whitmer up there, and it stopped the progression of Optic. They couldn't get up CD Connector, no matter how hard they tried. They had pressure from Window, pressure from Short, or two people actually pressuring from Short as well. So Optic will be forcing up, though. Mixwell's actually got the Scout in hand already, looking to potentially do some damage. Otherwise, Tech Nines and Deagles across the board, mainly Deagles, though. Yeah, they're going. Alu's coming up with this connector with three in the middle, Freiburg and uh, 
and uh, mix well on that scout, trying to get some damage done, see if they can get some tags off and finish them off. Magisk also with the Deagle. Mixwell needs to be a little bit more aggressive with that scout, see if he can do some damage and then maybe the Deagles can uh, get some body shots off to finish people off. Up to a quick 5 versus 4 here for Rogue, but uh, that has been quickly turned around as Mixwell trades one out onto Shinobi. Vice coming in for the kill onto now 4 versus 3 and low HP for these Optic players. Yeah, Magisk is now going to be taken down as well. Mixball has managed to make his way towards ladder, but it's around from all sides. Whitman's doing quite well of himself for the MP9 so far. He's picked up two, and it's all up to Alu, who's already tagged down low. He's dinked Whitman, but he can't land the final shot. And now it's going to be Vice pushing up for the M4 just to clean him up. So much cleaner, a better start for Rogue. That's exactly what they wanted to see. It looks like they're doing well to compose themselves as well. It's very difficult to mentally come back from such a blasting on overpass. Mm, absolutely. Those positions on uh, the pistol were really beautiful. You don't see too often that someone gets boosted up onto the bricks onto short there, and people, that absolutely destroys um, people coming out of underpass. I might uh, steal that little one. And uh, two top mids, two towards underpass, so they're going to try and pinch mid late into this round. No flashes here for the optics so that side, so they're just going to go for a bit of a run-in. Well, they might just be running into a slaughter right now. The grenades are decent so far, and Vice is just backed down, and there you have it. Vice picks up three right now because he's also taken down mix well. And it's all up towards Alu, who's just locked out behind a Molotov. He's going to be pushing forward, trying at least to get a single kill, but surely he's going to fall eventually. He's waiting for Shinobi to peek, but one's pushed out from short. A Vice will clean up. Starting off hot in towards the first initial rounds, but still early days. Here come the guns for Optic. I'm liking this little um, three-man duo in mid between uh, Vice, Whitmer, and Shinobi. It looks like they've got a fair bit of chemistry on this middle area. Let's see what happens. I mean, op uh, Alu hasn't brought out the AWP. Yeah, looks like it's going to be all rifles here. Smoke going out towards top mid and three-man mid setup. They're going for a bit of a death squad onto mid. Not going to let um, Rogue get anything done on mid, hopefully. Let's see if Whitmer's able to take advantage of having the AWP against the rifles here. And uh, looks like they are playing that 1-3-1 setup again. Um, one aggressive up the catwalk behind a smoke, probably looking to try and get a pick onto mid. And one in connector as Whitmer repositions around towards the ticket booth. But look at this, Freiburg's already f uh, close up. Vice though does manage to just slide out of connector and at least get the trade. But here comes that T presence towards short. And I think Vice did just barely spot Mixwell. You can see Hiko at the moment, just a little bit pressured. He's aware of the danger in short and this is gonna call for the rotation for Whitmer all the way towards the B site. Now A, a little bit lacking in presence. This is where the experience is really gonna show for Rogue of how well they are drilled on their Mirage. The easy part of the round is the early part where it's a 1-3-1 setup. The hard part of the round is when Optic starts to make those uh, moves into connector, getting someone boosted into window, getting someone into ladder and how you adjust for that. You know, um, the Rogue players need to be really well drilled to make sure that they don't get caught off guard from these middle positions. And it looks like after that initial contact onto middle, they're just gonna give it up and they're gonna play the bomb sites and say, you know what, Optic, you guys can have window, you can have jungle, you can have connector, and uh, that is not the bomb site. And as soon as you come to the bomb site, we are going to kill you. Yeah, and so far, they're just holding on right now. Here comes Uber with a peek, but he's unable to get the kill. They knew where he was, but Vice is going huge once again. Four kills. He does have assistance from his teammates, but still an impressive start for Vice. He's looking like the mixed well of Rogue right now. 11 kills. Absolutely unstoppable, and that's what you need currently for Rogue. You need someone to be stepping it up and showing off dick. It doesn't matter what kind of caliber, that you're a young talent and you can just still tap heads. Yeah. He's is the best of them. It's not even necessarily really like just straight up tapping heads, you know. He's more like he's playing his position quite well. He's putting his crosshair in the right place. He's positioning himself well and he's getting all the frags that he needs to. Should be a quick A execute here. So uh, Uber and Vice are going to need to do quite well to uh, defend this. Use their Molotovs and utility well. Plenty of util left for the Optic side as the smoke's coming towards the A-bomb side. Out come the Optic players. All right, they've flooded out through Tetris, but they're still stuck behind the incendiary grenade. It's a well-placed one, and they are now coming on towards the site. Uber's got to do well in the M4. He's going to take down Mixwell. Good spray to also follow it up on towards Nath. A third one towards Alu, but the surround comes forward from the gist. But Vice and Shinobi, they're there to clean up, so they only lose a single rifle, which, you know, at the end of the day, they deny the bomb plant. They lose a single rifle. That's not too bad. Vice is building up a heavy, heavy bank. And now here, surely, is where the AWP comes in for Alu, and you're expecting him to kind of train it on that CD connector position, because they know that Vice loves dancing around there. 
Yeah, this is where the uh, experience of the optic players and uh, whoever is calling for them, I believe it's Freiburg, should be showing. Uh, Alu looks like he's going towards B apps for that pick, actually. So they're go not going to try to neutralize the connector position too much. Heavy stacking towards B here. So let's see if they're going to try and go for a bit of a short split through uh, short and B apps as Alu leading out trying to get that pick. And it looks like ex that's exactly what they're going for. Extension short smoke up and Freiburg gets the quick entry. Vice, lots of damage onto the optic players through that smoke, but Optic getting the entries onto this bomb side. Let's see if Hiko's able to hold his own here. Yeah, he's dancing around back towards the first comms. Also spots out Naf. Naf so low, though. Should be taken out eventually because he's looking too many angles. Majisk, what a flick. What a trade. Shinobi, they know he's there, but he's going to fake the plant once. But Shinobi's managed to wrap around. Oh, he's missing all his shots. He does think Alu's through the edge of the box, and Alu's going to be low. The P250 does work out, but Uber, a team kill coming forward. He's going to be tagged just slightly through the wall, but Alu knows where he is down towards 6 HP, and Arlo's going to make an aggressive play right now. The bomb's out in the open, and Uber, they just change positions with each other. Uber he out knows. the window, Arlo through the door, and Arlo is going to miss yeah. a shot, and Uber lands the head. Rogue just barely hold on. It's a costly round, but they do take the round victory, and that's so crucial. Optic. Now, they're the ones that are getting slightly smashed right now. Yeah, and it's all off the back of, you know, Vice really turning up and a lot of their players in that mid, they're absolutely beautiful 1-3-1 one, one setup. Looks like a bit of miscommunication here from Optic. Mixwell's going for the force buy and the rest of them are only going for pistols, so not really sure what's happening there. Looks like they are sort of staggering to get stuff together in spawn. Um, they're going to set up a bit of an A execute with a couple of pistols and... Uh, Let's see what Mixwell, what role Mixwell's going to play in this. He is actually uh, number zero. Where's number zero? He's going to go be part of the execute with the rest of them. Maybe throw a smoke out towards the CT spawn. Looks like the three smokes set up with uh, a couple towards underpass. So uh, maybe throw those smokes out. Wait for the Molotovs to uh, disintegrate on the A ramp and then start try to force Alu and uh, his uh, friend in the underpass there up the connector and try to get some work done. Yeah, the smoke grenades are connected just to allow them to boost Ooh, up. Ooh, they're and boosting in the window. Moment. Will Shinobi catch this? Well, oh, just opens it up one towards Whitmoss. So no, they haven't caught it out. They do know now, though. And you can see Vice. Oh, mm. Vice, what are you looking at? I was just going to find an easy kill. Shinobi does manage to pick up one on towards Magist, but... Oh, Shinobi's picked up two, as a matter of fact. The bomb still hasn't crossed on towards the site just yet. Two on three. Uh, only the AK in the hands of Mixwell, who's already down to 13. This is still definitely winnable for Rogue right now. They're just holding positions, and the bomb has to hold its nerve right now. That looks like they are still committing towards the A bomb site. They had to sprint and leave. You can see Hiko is actually trying to cut off that potential rotation, Shinobi but Optic sh are committing. Shinobi should get flashed here, yeah, and he's going to get pushed by Freiburg, but he's counter flashed and ready for it. Bomb going down on the default position, but he's going to Molotov out. That's a beautiful Molly to uh, force. Naf out of position there, but he's going to back off towards the gay box. Luckily, they already know where he is, and at this point, Shinobi should really be getting info for his teammate as Naf tries to get a quick one dig onto Hiko. They're going to try and retake the bomb site, but Shinobi running in too far ahead of Hiko, and he's not able to trade. Two versus one situation here. Hiko needs to go in fast soon. He knows where Mixwell is, and Mixwell is so low. Well played by Mixwell just to get the information. Naf, only one more deagle shot needed, and Hiko has to go with the pistol right now, and Naf finding a headshot. Optic will pick up a force by where Rogue just lose control of the A bomb site. Too eager there from uh, Shinobi. On, on 20 HP, you really just need to get the information for your teammate and uh, make sure you trade the kill. They already know where one of the uh, the Optic players is positioned, hiding in that gay box. They just need to chill out and um, go together. And it looks like a bit of miscommunication does cost them the round there that they could have definitely closed out. And it's going to allow Optic a foothold back into this game. They're able to get the full buy out, including the AWP on Alu. And they're going to go for a bit more of a... Passive approach here, uh, double underpass with Naf walking, uh, lurking towards the uh, A area, two at top mid, and they're going to go for a bit of mid control, try to get those two players, maybe one boosted into window or some connector control as Alu controls the angles with his ult. Whitmer going for a bit of a one-way on the A ramp, um, that's not going to pay off, there's no one there to get to. As Vice plays off the connector here, smoke's still off. Whitman's going to open up. Yeah, he's going to take out the uh, the lurker on Naf as Alu gets himself into the ladder room here. Matt just killing off Shinobi there in the jungle area. And they are aware that there is one in window here, but Vice isn't able to capitalize onto Magisk as it is left into a 4 versus 3 here by Optic. Mixwell just holding towards City Connector right now. He's just 
Dancing around the line, Whitmer. There's two on the A bomb site, but they can get a good surround on towards the B bomb site. Whitmer has not checked CT spawn, and now they're surrounding Mixwell. Gonna get that headshot and dink on towards Uber, and Majis coming in from behind means an easy kill towards Whitmer, and Hiko is just locked out of this right now. Great aim on towards Majis, trying to spray through, but Mixwell saves Alu's life at the end. And Optic now starting to show a little bit of life and just resetting Rogue very, very quickly. Just two rounds already, and Rogue just dirt poor. I should say dirt for but they're starting to not be able to buy up the weapons that they need. Yeah, that key 1v1 being so crucial it's to turn the tide for Optic there. Naf closing that round out being a huge impact play and he is going to try and farm himself up some cash with the MAC-10 fast contact play out of A-Ramp as Uber rips the head off of Naf and Freiburg trades him out. They're going to take control of this A-bomb site once they get out from Tetris. Uber still holding the line. There is oh another headshot coming in from Uber. Sub doing some work. Just now coming in, gets two, but he can't get the third. Uber's actually gotten three headshots for the Deagle so far. And he's looking for more, but he can't get it as Alu cleans up. Continues to spray as well. We'll pick up the AWP back. So it looked a little bit messy. Uber tried his best, but it wasn't enough. But damage was done. And now Rogue will be buying straight back up into this. Open the hands of Whitmer, four rifles up, but limited lack, limited utility actually, so. Alu looking a little bit frustrated at how many bullets it actually takes to kill somebody on 150 ping. Seems like about 50 extra. As uh, Uber stepping up a little bit in that round, doing some economic damage. Mixwell going over aggressive up the A slope as Vice takes him out. Five versus four here quickly, but they are watching the palace area and Alu's able to capitalize. Luckily, Vice trades him out, but trades going back and forth. Now the three versus three should favor the T's until Shinobi brings it back into Rogue's favor. Freiburg and Naf up aggressive into this connector area, getting some key control of the map as they're able to move it onto the A-bomb site. Ooh, Whitman misses another one. If he shot just then, would have tagged down Freiburg, but Hiko coming in with Shinobi at least drops the bomb. Now it's all down towards Naf, one and two. Still got to transition across. He spots the foot of Whitmer, but Whitman's just a little bit better. He has that scope. So Rogue to manage to just scrape another round of victory together. If they close out this next round, they might force uh, Optic onto a singular eco, so that's the good news here for Rogue. However, their economy is not doing too crap shot either, so if they do um, if they do lose this one, then they'll also be forced onto an eco. This is an extremely important round to determine what the scores are going to be like the rest of this half. Looks like Optic once again, one going fast into the B apartments. Looks like with a friend, so they're going for that short split again. They're going to do that progression short smoke. Freiburg and his friends are going to charge up that short B, and these B apps guys are going out early. Um, they're not going to be looking at Freiburg, and Alu gets the entry out on B apps, and they're going to go for this fast split, and it's working out beautifully for Optic. Show me the UMP managed to take down Alu, but the trade's coming forward in the favor of Optic at the end of the day, and they're able to easily take this B bomb site. Beautiful call there from uh, from Optic, and I think that that's a really good uh, sign that uh, you know the RGL has got a good reign on this team quite early because ideally, you know, in an important round where the economy is so low for both teams, you generally, especially on the T side, want to sort of uh, save your most confident strategy, the most you know strategy out thing that you're uh, familiar with doing for the most important round that's going to be absolutely crucial to determine what the rest of the half's going to look like, and that's exactly what they do. Looks like they know how to throw those sort of short B extension smokes, that top mid smoke, and they went for the fast split, and it worked out beautifully. They took out Rogue with ease, and it's going to put a huge strain on Rogue's economy here, and a uh, bunch of their players down on 1,500. Tackpool is going to have to come out from Rogue, and... Uh, I don't know what I would do if I was in this position. Two players on a double eco late into the sort of half. Optic, you know, surviving with three players and getting a bomb plant. So they'll probably have another gun round after this, even if they were to lose this round. Bit of a hard call here for Rogue. I mean, I might personally sort of maybe go for a bit of a pistol force buy, maybe play a couple of pistols close towards the A, or maybe one or two pistols in the connector with the rifle sort of going for some more aggressive picks, try to get a foothold in the round fairly early on, and then try to turn the round away uh, around that way. I, I don't know if I would go for an eco here. You're sort of conceding that one round with that M4 with a bit of utility and armor that you've saved, and uh, the second round after that, so... Bit of a hard decision here for Rogue, whether they want to concede two rounds in a row and play it safe, or whether they want to take a bit of a risk. And I mean, 
they're already underdogs heading into this this map, so I reckon a risk. A risk Maybe a stack towards that connector as well as mid area, so that way you have control of A, because that's most likely optics so far have shown. All right, we're gonna kind of go towards. We're going to kind of go towards mid and try to take that control and the either flex on towards B or on towards A. So if you can at least shut down that mid area, well, mid's obviously most so critical for Rogue yep. to kind of take control of and that's where Shinobi as well as Uber stacked and two towards short. Yeah, they have been really utilizing that middle area coming out of underpass and top mid. Uber with the one singular rifle isn't able to get anything done. Luckily, Whitmer does take out Magis. Mixwell, extremely low, four HP here for him. Naf charging out the A ramp with the MAC-10, full confidence, farming up some cash, looks like an optic round. Eco able to make things interesting by taking out Mixwell, but that's all they're able to get done. They do concede the Eco, so... Rogue shouldn't force by here. Famous armor and util wouldn't be really good enough on many of their players. I would just go for a couple of digs, see if you can kill some of the optic players, force them to rebuy. I'd uh, like to... Well, sorry for cutting you off, but I also like to see one of them having a few flashbangs and Vice has picked them up, so... Yeah, I would say that, uh, sort of, uh, yeah, they're going to flash over mid and try to crunch it from connector and short after that Molotov is extinguished. However, looks like Optic's going for a bit of a contact play out onto the A-bomb site, so... Ooh, Uber taking out Freiburg. He's been on point with that Deagle on this map so far. And four versus four here, they're going to have to retake through Connector and uh, they're going to get tapped down by Naf and Magis there. Ooh, Hiko! Hiko. That's bringing back some old form as now he's looking for another head. But unfortunately, the aim punch, he was looking so crisp just then. Oh, that, that was beautiful. Sweet. Yeah, that's what you get sometimes with those high sense sort of... Um, players is that, you know, in a very short amount of time, if they've got a good feel for their sense, they can flick small movements with their mouse at, in such a quick fashion because, like, you know, it's only a couple of millimetres on the mouse pad, whereas a player with lower sense would have to flick a couple of centimetres or try to make a raw adjustment that's quite um, harder for them to do with their sort of arm adjustment, but when you've got a higher sense, it's just a small wrist movement. And, uh... Rogue with that double eco is basically just like saying, we need to get these last two rounds. If they don't go 9-6 in this half, they've given up two rounds for nothing. And uh, extremely passive setup here for Rogue. They're going to give up mid play towards the jungle area and try to punish Optic going over aggressive, boosting into that window area and playing up through the connector like they have been. So let's see if it works out for them. They're going to need to win these duels. If they don't win these duels, this round's going to get super over for Rogue super quickly. But... Even if they do win the duels, they might get traded out and then the round's going to get messy, so... Not sure what's going to happen here. Magis being an absolute thorn in Rogue's side, up through this window every single round, making things difficult for them. And uh, two trades back for Rogue, but... You know, Uber definitely needs to stay alive at this ticket area. Let's Maybe see if... He's transitioning back. Yeah. So, Bomb's going to go down here for Optic and we're going to get into the late round. Very, very late rotation from Rogue. They're just slowly clearing all the lines. They're afraid that Optic have just got the Lurk players going and Uber is just going to stay alive for now. He doesn't really need to move. He just has to hold off on the CD position and just know that Optic won't push him. Now Molotov towards Firebox as the rest of Rogue now slowly moving in Whitmore. Clears it out. Doesn't know where Naf is. Naf is just entrenched within Palace. Smoke going up on towards Plant. They've already mollied out Firebox. They've used two mollies. A bit of a lack of communication there for Rogue. They could have mollied something else out. Maybe Tetris would have been a good one. Rogue, uh, Hiko's pretty much forced to go for this full defuse, and it's not going to work out for him. And just doesn't doesn't work out for Rogue. A bit sad there. They were off to such a strong start, and then losing that key 1v1, and deciding to go for the double eco instead of taking a bit of a risk doesn't work out, because they don't secure that gun round, and now they're broke again, and they have to go for the force buy that they could have taken a risk on earlier, and possibly worked out for them. I mean, it wasn't even that bad of a call, if you think about it, because of how aggressive optics being up in this window area. If you put a pistol in the left side of window, and maybe one in connector, um, it could have worked out fairly well for them, but Optic again with the contact A play, making, keeping things really, really simple in this half. They're just lining up for Mixball. He's just stirring them up right now in towards a, a pot of cake batter, really, because just making it look too easy. Eco, last man left standing, and Optic needs to round from all sides, and eventually Freiberg's just going to tap, tap, tap away. Gets the kill, 8-7.
Rogue started off so well, though. I swear they were up 5 0. 6 0, as a matter of fact. They're up 6 0, and Fulham just to lose so many rounds. Optic definitely stepped it up towards the end, took, uh, I guess, regained that mid control, and just went, all right, let's just stop, you know, messing around. Let's not think Rogue have a chance in this. Yeah, if um if this game was a cake batter, then uh, for Rogue, you know, that, that cake started off as a nice chocolate cake. You know, you had all the right ingredients in there, and then somebody came along and dumped a bunch of walnuts in it. Oh, I'm assuming you don't like walnuts. No. no. Let's go for a short break, and let's see how it goes. It's not over yet for Rogue. Eight, seven and a half in Optic's favour. Find out what happens after a short break. Hello guys, welcome back towards the halftime break between Optic as well as Rogue Gaming for this map number two in Mirage. If you just joined us, it is 8-7, but barely in Optic's favor. I'd say momentum's heavily in their favor, but it was so promising for Rogue at the start, up 6-0 on the CT side. What went wrong for them? I would say that key 1v1, them losing that really sort of turned the tide of the economy. Um, that that decision to sort of not force by in the middle of that half, moving towards the end of it. I mean, it, it would have been, it would have worked out if they were able to convert that gun round um, towards the end of that half and then sort of converted the other round, made it 9-6, but it allowed Optic to get a foothold back into that game and ended on an 8-7 half for a Mirage, which in all, all things considered, if you've got a strong T side, it's not too bad. You know, Mirage used to be more of a CT-sided map, but um, now that more sort of T-side strategies have evolved more and more and that mid-control is sort of becoming a more more of a mainstay in uh, today's meta, um, people getting more comfortable with the strategies, it's a lot easier to get T-rounds. Uh, it just depends on the team, I suppose. I would argue as well, Rogue, they have a good chance in this because so far the pistol round strategies that they, sh that they showed on the CT side, that was really unique. Never... Like you said before, never seen that before. I think in my entire time watching games, I hadn't seen actually that short boost on the pistol round. Mm -hmm. And that was very effective. Whitmer was able to get at least two or three kills, I believe, in that position. Or at the very least, allow his other teammates to kind of pincer off that CD connector. And I'll see if Rogue can bring some of that innovation on towards their T-Pistol. It's going to be absolutely critical if they are to try to bring it back against Optic, who are looking to make it another 2-0. They were in this position yesterday on Inferno. Just different momentum this time. So, smoke out towards the top mid by Rogue, and then two smokes on the right side of the A-bomb site with flashes raining over the top, piling out Palace. Naf trying to go aggressive through that jungle smoke gets dead completely ripped off, and Hiko going straight into CT and taking out Magis. So, fast lead for Rogue here, but it's, they're retaking fast through CT, and if Rogue's not able to punish this beautiful flash there, they're able to completely blind Alu, but Hiko's not able to punish him. Oh, Alu gets another headshot. And Alu steals a smoke in the kit as well. He's picked it up. Knows where Whitmer is, is in Palace, but doesn't know where Shinobi is. He's just dancing around. Whitmer makes contact. Knows now Alu has pushed out far. And Shinobi. Oh, Shinobi's made his position known as well. Alu's got a smoke. He's going to drop onside the bomb. Oh my goodness, he's going to go for this right now. Whitmer's going to be having the tap away. He's actually come out with a knife. He's slashing around. He can't find the knife. Alu gets the defuse with the drop kit. Whitmer, at the very least, gets the kill, but... Optic get the round. Rogue. That was such a good play, but their execution once again towards that CT area, they have to kill the CTs. 
They definitely do. Hiko not getting that kill on Alu fully blind was definitely a key factor. And then Shinobi in the 2v1 there making his position known. Um, bit of a, you know, key mistake there as I don't think Alu actually knew that, um, knew that he was at the firebox there, so... Optic now with a lead up 9-7. Good, good news for Rogue here is that, um, not that NAF is completely destroying them with an MP9 and making all the money with ace. an ace in that round, but that because it's a bit of a closer half, the pistol isn't as big of a factor as to who comes out ahead. You've got a couple more gun rounds to sort of get a foot into the half, as opposed to that, um, that last game where Optic came up with a 12-3 lead and took... I think they took out the... No, they didn't take they out the... Pistol, they lost they Pistol, but they won the anti-eco. The yeah. Yeah. So... Third... Uh, first gun round coming out around early due to that bomb plant in the pistol. Looks like they're just going to go for a fast A execute. Um, good little strategy here from Rogue in the first round. Optic opting to play aggressive up the underpass, it looks like. So they've got plenty of information, but they haven't got anybody in position to stop this A execute, except for Magisk, who is just going to... Looks like there's no smoke up onto the CT. They've gone for a jungle smoke, and then they've extended it with a connector. A complete spray through on the firebox there. Um, three versus three here, and Rogue have weapon advantage and positional advantage with Hiko being aware of this flank. He's able to shut him down as well, so it's now all up towards Freiburg. He's got the... Now for Mars in hand, he's got to reload it, seven bullets. He's going to spray away, but they know where he is now, so you can see a lot of gunfire just raining down. Shinobi's picked up the bomb, he's going to plant it safe in the open. Freiburg's got a lot of work to do to try to bring this one back. He's going to jump up towards Ticket. Spots out Hiko, Dink him down as a matter of fact, but Whitmer does put him out of his misery. It was starting to look good for Optic at the beginning part, but Rogue do manage to just gather themselves, calibrate and... They're able to do a lot of damage, and Naf dropping an AWP over towards Alu on the back of the four MP9 kills earlier on the anti-eco. Those odds are about right. I'd probably, so. that's, to be fair, that's probably a little bit generous towards Rogue, I'd say. Ah, oh, the ping factor, though. Even then, it just doesn't look like the ping factor's affecting Optic that heavily. They're still looking too good against these, I guess, Tier 2 NA teams. Yeah. That's not me trying to be harsh towards Rogue. I think it's an accurate summary of probably where they're lying at the moment in terms of the overall NA scene. Another contact A coming out here, and Allo only just spots it and pouring out of all of the A angles come out Rogue, but as soon as they're able to get to that stair area, they put a bit of a stop to by Magisk and Alu. Two versus two unfolding here, and uh, utility needs to be used for Rogue to get control of that bomb site. They're going to do it. Bomb plant going out on default, but if they are, if they're going to play retake for Optic here and allow them to take the bomb site, it's not going to work out well for Rogue. And wisely, Vice is going to push up onto that Tetris position. Good call there from Rogue, but overextending Alu punishes him, rotating around to the CT angle and two versus one here for Hiko and. See if he can do it. Oh, what a rotation coming from Hiko. Does catch Alu is just pushing up and now Freiburg in the open, down towards 10 HP, but Hiko wins that. And Rogue. They've broken their close. economy. Optic most likely will just opt for a full eco in this round, actually. Yeah, they, they'll be able to buy next if they full eco. Should have about 4k. They'll be limited on the utility, and Vice and Shinobi get to pick up those Mac 10s and farm a bit of cash. So, Rogue getting back into this game very nicely, and um, looks like Optic's going to go aggressive towards that mid area. But good. Um, Good recognition of the fact that they did get the default plant and adjusting accordingly. It looked like Vice, um, I think it was on the Tetris area, looked like he was opting to go for a bit of a rotation off uh, onto the A ramp area, but the call comes in that they have to actually hold control of the bomb site. Not really too much to talk about in this round. As, I mean, we've all seen MAC 10 Eco Slaws not too exciting, in my opinion. Some people, it's a cup of tea, but not mine. Oh, it was a good read by Rogue to actually go towards the B site. They yeah. all went together, didn't try to spread out on that anti-eco for theirs, and do manage to take it this time. And Optic, they do force up with rifles. Shinobi's keeping the Mac 10 here, so expect him to go a bit aggressive in this round, possibly. There's a lot of head armor, though, on the side of Optic, so it's... There is, yeah. Normally, we say it's really, really effective, and I think Shinobi was banking on the fact that they'd go for actual more utility, and Alu, I don't think is aware. Shinobi's actually pushed straight forward. Now, he's lit. But he's still alive to do some damage no longer, though, because Alu hears that and goes, No, I know exactly where you are. You're dead. 
Vice, good entry out, but Naf, oh, he can't spot the feet! Now he finally does, he will take down Uber, spots the bomb as well, Flash is coming in towards underneath Balcony, he's blinded, but there's no one in position to really get the trade, there's a Molotov, Vice finally comes forward with a kill, uh, Alu with another trade, he's down towards 19, Freiburg is there as well, but the plan is going to go down in default, and Hiko is still ready, and waiting to do some damage, Whitman's got the AWP in hand as well. Flash coming out through the smoke here for Freiburg as he tries to take control of the bomb side. But Hiko covering the cross beautifully. Whitmer's got one flash, going to throw it up and try to stay alive here as his teammate tries to cover him with flashes also. Alu just trying to punish Whitmer's peak here, but Whitmer's giving him nothing very wisely here as Hiko shoulders for the information. But Alu's got no kit and he's only oh, looking to Christ. sort of get a bit of more money off of Rogue at that point once the bomb timer starts to get lower and Whitmer just goes... I don't care, we're going to take you out, make sure that your economy doesn't get too high, and Optic's going to have to go for another save, so should be going up to 12 rounds here for Rogue, and these contact A's are killing Optic at the moment. They really need to make an adjustment, maybe into a 2-1-2 setup play, maybe in front of the smokes a bit more, but uh, I'd say it's not even much of an execute coming out from Rogue. It's definitely more of a contact play. One flash over the top after a bit of mid-pressure coming out Slope and Palace as a team. Just walking out and getting the trades, getting the information on the CT positions and making sure that those uh, rotations can't come through for the jungle. Nice little flash there from Mixwell, but doesn't quite take out Uber and they're going to pile up short into the B site. Freiburg, good shot from Vice. Tries to find the deagle or the angle and Optica is just going to back out with the rest of the members. They've got body armor, just most likely looking for exits on the back of these pistols. Here goes spots one exiting towards a ramp. Oh, it's just all close angles. They just want to steal an AK-47 and try to take it to the next round. Ooh, we do have a contest on our hands now, Pilly. So I look a lot better for Rogue. They're going in fast and... Look, you know what? Sometimes going in fast is the right idea. It definitely is, um, especially when you're more of an inexperienced team. Um, just getting a really good handle on this is the strategy that we're going to do. It eliminates the decision making from a lot of your players and it just make, means that you're able to just go into the bomb site and go, I'm going to shoot people here and here. This is going to be smoked off. This is where the flashbangs are going out. The communication is simpler. You don't have to think of you know, a bunch of different options of, you know, when you're going for that mid control, I need to clear connector, I need to clear ladder, I need to clear window, we need to smoke this off, smoke this off, what if he goes aggressive, what if he does this or that? You'd, it takes 90% of the decision making out of the equation and you just go for the kills with uh, the utility and uh, a good idea of what you're running into. Double AWP setup now coming in the hands of Alu as well as Mixwell. See where these orbs are going. Uh, so Alu's taking towards City Connector area, but there's no one towards mid, and Mixwell taking the orb back towards B side. So it looked like there was both orbs trained towards mid initially on. And Rogue playing very, very far back. Almost a default, given how... Well, it is a default, given how far back they were playing. Just odd to see that Rogue actually just switching it off. Yeah... I don't know. I think that it's okay to do for the start of the round to try and punish aggression. They're expecting Optic to make an adjustment and try to uh, definitively win this game, but I like this from Rogue. This is something that could be a big uh, no-no for them, is getting a little bit too hesitant and just sort of um, like leaving things a little bit too long. They need to, you know, it was wise to sort of, at the start of that round, play far back, punish the aggression, make sure that nothing weird happens and the Optic doesn't try to make too much of an adjustment, but go back to your strength. You know, go back to what's been working for you. Make sure that you're doing, you know, the contact out A that's been working so well for you. Just a bit of a twist on it to sort of throw a spanner in the works. Keep Optic guessing. Optic still slowly rotating around. They now see the smokes coming out. There's the counter Molotovs. Spray through from Naf, not connecting with anyone just yet. Uber is the first one out, is going to be making his way on towards Sandwich. The AWP, well, not sure if they spotted out the AWP towards Ticket, but Majisk just standing on top of it. Very, very close towards raining some fire. And he will take down Vice. He also spots the bomb and spots two more in the smoke's fader, which means Alu's able to strike. Naf also chiming in with a kill on his own. Whitmer, maybe it's just a little bit late from Palace, and Hiko trying to come up connect to get shut down in the back. It means Whitmer just has to save, and that's where Rogue goes terribly wrong. They're taking too long to execute. Optic can respond accordingly. Yeah, 
I don't, I don't know that it was uh, a case of being too long to execute there for Rogue. I like the fact that they went for the adjustment and they tried to punish any potential aggression there from Optic. The problem was is that Optic's, you know, you, you can only pull so many times doing the same trick over and over again before the other team, especially when they've got a lot of experienced players on their, on their side, goes, all right, guys, let's all get on the same page. When they do this, we are going to respond with this. And they decided to just go for a full retake on the A bomb site. Magisk plays very patiently up there on the uh, ticket booth and he goes uh, for the one pick and then falls off. They all play retake. The problem that um, Optic were really running into with those contact A's from Rogue in the early parts is that they weren't on the same page whatsoever. They were all spread out. Half of them were fighting in front of the smokes, trying to push through smokes, um, getting picked, and it would get into an ugly situation taking disadvantageous fights for them. That time when the execute came in from Rogue, they all played retake. Magis gets the one pick and then they retake together and it's easy, easy pickings there. So they've definitely worked out. This is how we're going to stop them from doing this um, contact A. That's not going to work again. And now Rogue needs to throw that second layer of strategy in at them. They need to do something different here. And uh, they need to recognize how Optic's playing and sort of do something differently and to punish it. And it looks like... They're going to take mid control and either split A or B. Looking like a bit more of an A split, although the bomb is going towards ladder, so Mixwell oh no. picking the one. Bomb. They're playing completely far back in the B side, and Ooh. Uber takes out one on A, so this might be a readjustment oh. through the connector area. They know that the orbs are playing retake, but they're picked off right and left, and Rogue are just taking a little bit too long to take map control and make a definitive decision, and they're not properly clearing out these orb angles. Yeah, and this double AWP is just raining terror at the moment, especially Alu, who now spots out Hiko, but Hiko's going to get another one before Mixwell, all the way down from short, I believe it was, gets the kill at the end of the day with the assistance of Naf, but Rogue, their money is starting to drain. They can still force up, but I don't think we'll see an AWP coming out this round. Really hasn't had that significant impact for Rogue in terms of their T-half. You know, for Optic, the double AWP is still alive. They managed to retrieve it for Alu. Yeah, definitely not. Double AWP working out well for them, and it looks like they're going to go straight back to the contact A, full A execute. The difference maker needs to be in this round that if Optic does opt to play retake, um, and it looks like they are sort of positioned more towards that middle area, Magic is going to fight a bit more in triple. So if he gets picked off, then that'll be a big point to Rogue sort of taking this round out. He's going to get one and do a fair bit of damage. Mixwell does get the pick. Three versus four, but the smokes are still up, so Rogue needs to swiftly get this bomb down, try to get maybe one more pick, but Uber, unfortunately, doesn't quite pick that one up onto Alu. Nice little trade there, and the bomb is going to go down. Vice has got a, a handful of utility here, and he needs to use it if they're going to take this round out, but Mixwell picking off Shinobi, and this AWP's killing Rogue. They know where he is right now as well, so Vice tries his best, but he's surrounded from all angles, and Optic will keep the double op set up alive once again. So Freiburg springing towards CT, Defuse goes forward in their way. There's your favourite balloons, Mitch. I love balloons. Makes me feel so happy. And uh, we're seeing that, you know, not only these orbs killing Rogue, but I would say the big, the big killer for Rogue is the fact that they just don't have anything other than this contact A. After this has stopped working, they just haven't got a second playbook. Looking like a bit of a one-trick pony here on the T side of Mirage. And uh, this is their final opportunity to make an adjustment, do something differently. If they don't take this round out, this map's going to slip out of their grasp. They might be able to pressure Alu. They already got mid. Alu misses his first initial contact play, jumping out through window. And Whitmer just lurking towards Palace right now as the rest of Rogue have control of mid. Counter and Serenity Grenades flying forward. Whitmer has spotted out the Armor Majestic. Oh, it does land the shot. He gets dinked down, but still gets the kill, which means that the T's can flood on towards the A site. Mixwell, though. Hiko, you can't be spotting a line like against Mixwell like that. Who's just been absolutely on fire so far. And Mixwell and Alu once again getting more AWP kills. This double AWP setup so potent, so effective. They know exactly where Shinobi is, but it doesn't matter because Shinobi gets two kills. And Mixwell, he's an absolute monster at the moment. Another no scope or a quick scope kill. Now scoping in, and Mixwell would four to end the round. Doesn't matter what Shinobi does, Mixwell will do it better. And Optic, two rounds away from bringing it back. You gotta feel bad for Rogue though. They put in so much work to come towards this stage. And then Mixwell, and as well as Alu, decide to kick it up another notch. 
Yeah, definitely. Mixwell and Alu being a big thorn in Rogue's side. They do actually, with the loss bonus, have enough money with that bomb plant for another buy. So, very limited utility on three of their players. They're just going to have to do something fairly straightforward and quick with this uh, limited amount of utility that they do have. Looks like a contact play out mid. Fast short split like Optic did, but they don't have the extension smoke and they're going to be walking into a crossfire from connector and short. Alu picks up the initial kill on Whitmer and Mixwell still completely unafraid, playing aggressive up short, but Uber teaches him why he should have been afraid. Freiburg now coming in. He wants some of the action as well, but this B apps area is now very, very open. They know where the bomb is, so there's just recontest just going forward. Great flashbang allows Nap to get the pick. Now he's secured mid. They know where the other two members are, but it doesn't matter because Vice, great entry on towards Freiburg. Now down towards a two-on-two. Bomb still lost towards Catwalk. Naps picked up the OWP and he's going to be starting to rotate across. And the Jisk on the long way around as Rogue are now splitting up. Just going to be chilling out for a bit. It doesn't look like Optics aware that the bomb's actually dropped on Cat. So, that Jisk has a really, really interesting position up here in the V-app. So, I would have expected he would have gone top mid if he was aware that the bomb's at Cat. Maybe Naps does. They are, I think they yeah, are aware. Naps is posted on there. He's just decided to go V-apps anyway. And Hiko might be a little bit aware of this. Looks like they're going to back off. They're just going to let them have the bomb play inside the apartments of either bomb site. And uh, once Rogue does uh, recover this bomb, they're taking so long that they're going to have to rush into the bomb site, not check the angles. And these this B apps and uh, A apartments positions are going to be absolutely killer in this as Magis punch, punishes Hiko from behind. Yeah, so they just secure the positions. Like, even in, given this scenario right now, there's only one way for him to go, and it's going to be on towards the A site. And Naf is ready and waiting. He can be watching the cross, but the bomb has just crossed just as Naf is looking up A ramp. He'll hear the bomb plant noise, and so they can play for the retake. Naf is just peeking out, just trying to make sure that Vice can't go anywhere. I think Vice is aware that Naf is here because he has made the single scope sound as Magix makes his way up the connector. Good play there from Vice. He has to challenge and take the 1v1 while he can, and now he can wait for Magix. This is an ex excellent position to go for the retake, and that nade gives away Magix's position, but Whoa. he's not able to take it out. That AK was the deciding factor in that round. If Magix doesn't have an AK there and he just gets the dink onto Vice, and Vice is able to clean up the kill if he has an M4, but. Because he has an AK, and Magis gets him with the third or fourth bullet recoil control into the head of Vice, and he's able to clean out that route. Really good attempt there from Vice. Good decision making in that uh, 1v2. And um, close round. Rogue at least putting up a little bit of a fight, but like I said, after those contact A's um, get put out, you know, there's not much they can do. I would say a promising factor for them in this game was that a couple of these XVX situations on the CT side have gone quite well for them, and they're they're just going for the contact A again. Most likely won't work. Alu, as well as Mixwell, have got orbs trained towards mid. There's the smokes. Expecting the bomb to just jump out of Palace soon. Magist does have the M4 out in hand. Vice doesn't check the line. They haven't checked behind here at the moment. It's an easy shot down for Magisk and Naf, who just gunned them down. They're just now on towards a P250. They know where Shinobi is, and well, no more assistance needed. That's a clean round from Optic to close it up 16 12. Much better from Rogue, but it's not good enough, unfortunately as Optic will go once again 2-0 today. Much closer on Mirage though. Yeah, definitely. And um, it's good that they're off to such a quick start here in the uh, NA Pro League, playing with majority of their players from Europe. Um, I mean, it, we are aware that they are going to stay in Europe for a lot of them. At least that's what's been speculated by a lot of people. But they are continuing to compete in the NA Pro League. So it's going to be interesting to see if they have to go back and forth competing or whether they're just going to play out the entire season of Pro League with half of their players on 150 ping. I don't imagine that's going to be a long-term, you know, good decision, especially going up when once they start to take on some better teams like SK and Cloud9, etc. on Liquid. I'm fairly certain that they are going to be flying their players in for Pro League. Uh, I think it was confirmed through either one of the Optic owners or I think through one of Mixwell's tweets. Okay. That they are going to be flying in eventually to play out the regular season. But I think Optic are also a little bit fortunate in the sense that they did start off against these Tier 2 teams. It wasn't against, you know, the powerhouses like, dare I say, CLG. CLG is looking like one of those upper echelon tier teams right at the moment alongside with SK Gaming and the others. So this is where Rogue was up 6-0. Then they dropped the anti-eco against his pistols where Optic was able just to come in and then from there on in it was really just the Optic show for the rest of the T-half. Rogue were able to get two more rounds but they didn't look like they in the same dominating factor. Optic just had that B split which worked time and time for them again. Good pistol start for Rogue. Allowed them to go up on the CT half. It was looking promising. Oh sorry, on towards their T-half. It was looking promising. 
but it they wasn't almost enough. closed out that uh, that T pistol, but not quite. This clutch from Hiko was an absolute defining factor in this game. Allowed a ri uh, rogue to get back into the game, and uh, these kind of clutches are the kind of clutches that define the game because he forced uh, Optic to go onto the eco and. Uh, that really made Rogue get a couple more rounds, but after that A split stopped working, the adjustment came in from Optic and they were able to close out the game fairly straightforwardly. Um, not for a lack of trying from Vice in that nice little 1v2 attempt. Almost took it out there, but those double orbs from Optic on the CT side, there wasn't anything Rogue could do, was there? No, they just sat the angles. I mean, once you have... Because you have to bank on the fact as well that in these close quarters, when you're posting up on towards Mixwell or Alu with the orb, that you should be able to take them down quite easily. But Mixwell, he's utilizing the orb at close range so effectively as well. And we saw that in the round where he got four kills as well. He was just able to completely shut down Rogue just coming in towards short, coming in towards A. He just wasn't missing anything. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, it didn't matter where what position he was playing from. He was able to shut them down quite easily. And um, it seems like he had a fairly good read for what they were doing. They weren't really playing retake A with the AWP. They were leaving the A bomb site to Magisk to sort of do what he w w would with it. And... Um they played actually a double orb quite heavily onto mid, utilizing that orb from Catwalk when Rogue tried to make the adjustment of putting pressure onto mid. But no matter whether they took mid or whether they, you know, just went straight to A, they always ended up.